uh, high, high 60s and low 70s. Oh, well, that sounds great. That'll be great. Yeah, thank you for asking. Well, you enjoy. That is good. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you'll be careful. Thank you. How mm. long will you be gone this time? We'll return uh, September 15th. Now you'll have a great time. Thank you. We will. Yeah. You all stay safe. Stay out of trouble. Oh, no. <laughs> Unless it's good trouble. <laughs> well, good That's trouble right. is good, yeah. Stay in good trouble. That's right. and welcome to virtual worship with Parkway United Church of Christ, where through God's spirit, we seek to listen deeply, build community, and act for justice. At this time, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and mute for a bit as we, have, we begin our worship. Um, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome with us. I'm going to encourage you to mute because right now I don't have the capacity to do that. As we begin worship today, I invite you to put your hands across your chest. Certainly, if that's uncomfortable, adapt. Rest the tops of your hands on the top of your shoulders and tap slowly. When's the last time you've been burped for air bubbles? <laughs> you release the bubbles of 
anxiety, discontentedness. Take a deep breath. And we prepare to give praise and open ourselves to sacred presence and love. Amen. For celebrations and prayer concerns, uh, in just a moment, I'll invite you to unmute or to type into the chat what it is that you celebrate, what it is that you seek um, Holy Presence with. We have a list of folks in our community, Tom E and M, Craig and Michael, Chuck and Wendy, Tim and Karen, Izzy and Lee, all who we continue to hold in prayer. All those who continue to struggle with COVID. Um, we have an emerging what's called discernment team who are who's going to be working with the minister uh, during the sabbatical in September and October called a discernment team. So we pray for them as they have already started their work and will be on retreat this coming Saturday. Ralph and Bill and Kate and Barb and Diane and Grant. What do you have on your hearts today? With gratitude, Michael shares recovery is going well. Say mine out loud because I can't type that fast. Yes, yes, Beth. Well, my uh, upcoming possible move, suddenly everything is going rather quickly. It's all beginning to feel like an avalanche about to happen, and I'm scared. <laughs> We pray with you. Thanks. As you make those preparations. And they don't they only take one pet, so I'm gonna to have to give away my parakeets and gerbil. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know that's hard. Uh, from Michael, Craig's nephew Sean is still very ill with heart disease and had a fall. Pray for Sean and Craig's entire family. What else? I'll be celebrating with uh, family my mother's 94th birthday today. Ah, uh, celebrations. Yes. yes, thank you, Nancy. A friend, Diane Duckett, has been visiting with me from New York and is traveling back today. So for a safe journey and Thanksgiving for her visit. Celebration. Travel mercy. Celebration for EJ's birthday tomorrow. She'll be 81. Wonderful. Thank you, Sarah. Wait, turn the video on. Uh, my, the little friend that I've been praying, having you pray for, Esri, got home from the hospital. And they are all so happy. And they had a regular old boring at-home week last week. So it's really a great celebration for her. She's, uh, the medication is working. Uh, she she has to socially distance, but at least she's not in the hospital. So thanks, and keep thinking about Esri and her family. Thank you, Margaret. I invite you now into a, a moment of stillness and before we move to the prayer Jesus taught and then our opening song. Um, there's an image in the uh, digital bulletin this week. Um, sit with that. What uh, emotion arises? What questions does it provoke in you? 
what are you in particular drawn to or what or it creates some discomfort for you. I'll just pause for a moment. Pray with me as you um, will in your preferred tradition and language. The prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our kingdom. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. Our opening song is Guide My Feet. Take it away, Sterling and Dan. my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Will with me, Lord, while I run this race. Will with me while I run this race. Will with me while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Hold my hand while I run this race. Thanks be to God. At this time, let's get it all stretched out here. Unmute and share words of peace with one another. Peace. 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 And remember, you've got to get the Yes, you Yeah, please mute. Please mute, everybody. Find the meeting button. I know they muted with it. Say what? Bye, Sean. Have a good trip. Have a good trip. Have a good trip. Wonderful time. Appreciate it. You all stay well. We'll miss you. Likewise. Likewise. John I could see here Sterling that last little bit. I think his microphone went weird. No, it was the whole binding. I couldn't hear the last. Ah. Yeah. Well, we couldn't. Because not everybody was muted. So it if, was, if somebody's house made a noise, then the 
mic. Yeah. yeah, please y'all, please uh, mute. It's really hard to hear sometimes. Yeah. Um, I'll mute now. <laughs> I guess I'll mute too. Well, good to see everybody. Yes. So as we all now mute again, I'm going to see if our guest Denise is with us. Okay. Here's a contemplative reading by Naomi Young. It's called, What's in a Word? What's in a word? Think carefully. God, Father, did your father beat you? God, justice, did you get a fair trial? God, nature, did the earthquake kill your family? God, love, did love hurt you? God, all, all beauty, all love, pure love, sensual, touching, feeling, a candle flickering, a stream flowing, the feeling of floating, flying. Think carefully of your words. In our scripture today, the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount, from the beginning of Matthew's fifth chapter, I'm going to read from the Common English Bible. And when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up a mountain. He sat down and his disciples came to him. He taught them saying, happy are people who are hopeless because the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Happy are those who grieve because they will be made glad. Happy are people who are humble because they will inherit the earth. Happy are people who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be fed until they are full. Happy are people who show mercy because they will receive mercy. Happy are those who are pure of heart because they will see God. Happy are people who make peace because they will be called God's children. Happy are those people whose lives are harassed because they are righteous, because the kingdom of heaven is yours. Happy are you when people insult you and harass you and speak all kinds of bad and false things about you, all because of me. This is what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. I have noticed often that after a significant medical episode or change in life, we often experience an opening, a new understanding of interdependence. Not always, but often. We know in an even deeper way, we are not self-sufficient. We don't live on our own. Just when we don't know when we'll go on or how we'll go on or, or what will happen, oftentimes resources from the community appear for us. And although we would never ever choose such vulnerability, such depending on others, wondering how we're gonna survive. It is an experience that's a gift, a blessing 
in a heightened sense of awareness, we are not alone. We become deeper as people of faith, as, as human beings. I must say my privilege is seeing it all the time in this community with the physical health, the mental health, the life challenges. To say we need help, that we can't do this on our own, unleashes a holy gift for all of us. Of course, in our culture, we are surrounded by messages that what is honorable is self-reliance, cheerfulness, boldness, ambition, a good reputation, the chutzpah to demand that we treated, be treated fairly. Many, many of those things are good qualities. And sometimes they can track into kind of an opposite message. That when you're not in those situations, when you don't have the energy to be cheerful right now, that when you no longer feel ambitious, that when your reputation has taken a, a few knocks, or when you are behind the starting line from the very beginning because of who you are, because of your identity, that somehow you are less than. Well, I say the Beatitudes function for the community of faith like a large buzzer on a game show sounding ah, wrong answer. Jesus sits on the mountain and calls foul on all of those conventional messages. In fact, in the Beatitudes, the very act of speaking a different kind of value is already the start of the fulfillment of good news to the poor, good news to the marginalized, good news to those who limp or have a hard time breathing or have high blood pressure, good news to those who are burnt out or are sick or depressed or anxious or don't know how they're going to pay their bills. Jesus makes it plain that that judgment of the world is just plain wrong. When you are poor in spirit, when you have literally the breath kicked out of you, when you are mourning your plight or the plight of somebody else, when you're hungry, when you're thirsty for righteousness, when you're weary and seeking peace, when you're humbled by circumstance, it's all a scandal in the sight of God. It's not of God. No matter what anybody else will say, this is not of God, this condition of yours. And you know, interestingly enough, just naming that, just resisting that falsehood actually un unleashes resources of the sacred in the midst in our relationships with each other. We're called toward each other rather than pride apart. Mm. You know, when you mourn, it's no fun. And yet, you know, you are not paralyzed. You are not numb. You are still alive. You still have feeling. You have the capacity to open your heart. Meekness is not all about lying down or and taking it. And period of heart is not about staying righteously out of the fray in some kind of spiritual bliss. It is realizing in bone deep ways that we need each other. And by needing each other and by acting on that truth, there is power. Power by the grace of God. Some of us were showed up at Granville Park on Tuesday evening to the Housing Justice Now teaching, and there was a woman who stood up, talked about, bear, bore witness to some of the things that she and many of her neighbors have been going through. She said, in, at one time, they raised her rent by 30%. Well, she did what she could. She called the corporate office and, and talked with them and negotiated it down at least by half. But then other things kept happening changes. And she said to herself, I wonder if this has happened to everybody else and all of the other units around here. And so she began speaking to her neighbors and they began telling their stories as she told hers. And they began to organize together in meetings. 
And she said, until that moment, I kept my head down and I pretended like I was self-sufficient. But when that started to happening, happen, when we began to organize with one another, it changed everything because we knew we were not alone. Theologian Clarissa Pincola Estes writes about her grandmother, her grandmother named Katerine a socioeconomically oppressed, rural immigrant woman of color who used wood fire to cook all of her meals, to warm her bathing water, and to keep herself warm her entire life. Katerine was a devout Catholic and a lover of the Black Madonna. So each night in ritual after the embers had cooled she would sift through the ashes of the fire and look for the remnant of a burning burnt log that may look like an image of a feminine form. And every once in a while she would find something and she would proclaim, she came to us, she's here with us, the black Madonna. Every so often the white male parish priest would come by and visit her and would deride Katerine of her collection or expanding collection of burnt black Madonnas. He said, ah, that's superstition. He tried to convince her that the virgin had porcelain skin and golden hair, but Katerine knew the powerfully presence of God in the burnt Madonna, burnt but not consumed. And she would cry out, she is still here. In a recent interview, Christina Cleveland, who's the author of the book that was released earlier this year, God is a Black Woman, says divine feminine theology is equalizing because anybody with a body can have a theology. That gives voice to a lot more people because it's also scary if the patriarchy can't control it. If I have a body and you have a body and everybody has a body, we all have access to the truth. And the patriarchy can't say, this is the truth. Well, the Beatitudes are body theology. We feel mourning in our throats and the smalls of our back. We feel hunger and thirst in our bellies. We feel the poverty of spirit in our lungs. And nobody can take away the truth we know between us when we lean into one another in the name of love, anointed with naming good news is still possible. Ivan Para is a broad-based organizer. He's been doing work for many, many years across North Carolina. He's been working for the last year and a half with many of us to rebuild a broad-based community organizing group here in Forsyth County. And we, some of us met once again, Thursday noon, and um, Mr. Par Paris said, we don't do something in the community because we think it's equitable. That's so abstract. He says, equity starts happening when you know somebody and you feel their pain and you got to fight alongside one another for something different because that's what relationship is. Mm -hmm. That's the Beatitudes. So as this church discerns our way into the future, this stuff is a centering point, I must say. You may or may not be marginalized by many of the ways many other people in our community are or have been. But you've been through some stuff. In some way, you have no vulnerability. You know by now the traps of the ambitious, self-reliant, cheery, capitalist facade. I'm not comparing sufferings. What I'm saying is, whatever you've been through when that you've had the experience of having to depend on something or somebody else, some hope beyond yourself, that is a path to be there for somebody. 
It could be somebody who's got a very different life story than yours. Not as some kind of hand down because you are strong and you are good and that somehow this support, this, this companioning uh, secures your righteousness. No, not at all. It's because we all have had the experience of having a breath knocked out of us and we all want to breathe again together. So I get it. I really get it. I get the weariness and the anxiety and the, and the uncertainty right now. And frankly, I just really don't want to hear any more things that I've sometimes heard. Like, we're a tiny little church of old people. What can we do? Listen, Parkway. You are feisty. You are resourceful and resilient and creative. I know you've faced death a time or two, and it's made you more vital in the spirit because of it. As a congregation, we are claiming our vulnerability. And then we're making it our strength. Blessed are you who can no longer run laps around somebody else, multitask like you used to, burn the candle at both ends, tackle the long list of to-dos. Blessed are you who are worn out, and not sure what you can do next. By naming it, it prepares us to be authentic with others who don't feel self-reliant and maybe haven't felt it in a long time. We know we need somebody. So let me say this, when you're overwhelmed by an invitation to participate in community, I invite you to discern it. Is that, I know that feeling, that creeping fatigue when, when something comes up, an invitation. I invite you to ask yourself, is that feeling of being overwhelmed, particularly because of old expectations of yourself? Or might that thing be reframed into a very, very particular way that your gifts and your energy match the invitation in a way that could actually give you a new sense of life in deepened relationships? Or is it truly a non-starter? And if it is, then to be able to boldly say, no, this is not for me, this is not for us, and we move on. I know some of you are not going to be able to stay on the sidelines this fall as we prod, educate, transport, share information on rights to get out the vote. I know that. I know many of you are gearing up to surround a resettled family with support, with world relief. Let's celebrate it. There are some very specific things that anybody with interest and heart can do to support those at risk at eviction. It is not something that is beyond capacity to do something as Housing Justice now ramps up its efforts. And many of those things can be happening without ever leaving your home. And we've made a congregational commitment in the last year to this broad-based community organizing effort, multiracial, multicultural, multi-faith, multi-tradition, building on the good work of the North Carolina Congress of Latino Organizations here in Forsyth County. And what is that community organizing about, really? It's about listening to somebody else's story. It's about telling our story and then being in relationship with each other. Acts of the Beatitudes. My 82-year-old mom is organizing a retirement community to turn out for the same kind of efforts in West Michigan right now. And if you don't like any of those, that's okay. What happens if a couple, you got with a couple of people at Parkway to discern if 
our congregation might be the beachhead in the Piedmont Triad for the efforts of Bill McKibben's new group called the Third Act, specifically designed for elders, elders with community clout because of their relationships, fighting at the intersection of climate crisis, racism, and economic inequity. What would that be like? We depend on each other. Many times we've had the life sucked out of us by conditions of health or family challenge or even just the drum of the daily news. And by depending on one another and owning that, we participate in the inbreaking reign of heaven in small but powerfully authentic doses. So might we all stir through the ashes of our uncertain and sometimes hard lives to ritually look for the shape of God and cry out, she is still here. Amen. Well, we've got to acknowledge everything you do. This is our moment to say gratitude, gratitude, gratitude for you showing up, for you making that phone call, for you um, going for a walk with somebody, for you making a meal when somebody is in a hard time, for you showing up for a committee meeting or a small group on Zoom, for you worshiping and praying with and for each other for you sending in an offering. And you can do that by clicking on that little button on the bottom of our website. You can do that by sending in a check. There are many ways. And thank you. A couple of announcements. We're gonna have some discussion about our theme once again after worship in a few moments. So stick around on Zoom land. And then um, next Sunday, we are, we've are we made the decision we're going to stay virtual for Sunday morning worship. And then in the afternoon at 3 o'clock, we hope you will invite many folk. We're going to try to do this as safely as possible with masking and social distance. We're going to have Dan's farewell concert. Uh, so um, we hope that you will uh, send out the invitation to folks in the community, your friends, neighbors, family, um, so we can be in celebration with Dan next Sunday. And then I want to, uh, I got you, Rebecca, I'll call on you in just a second. Um, at six o'clock, if you can stick around or if you can't come to the concert, Six o'clock outdoors, weather permitting. We're going to do a, a, a lamas ritual, which is the harvest celebration. October, August 1st is exactly halfway between the start of the summer and the start of fall. It's the, the middle point. So we are going to acknowledge that. We're going to pray and, and reflect on what are the harvests of our lives? And if you can come, I invite you to bring something that's reflective of harvest in your life. It could be a flower from your yard, or um, it could be an ac acorn that's just emerging. It could be tomatoes or summer squash, and we're going to build an altar with your offerings. Um, next Sunday, 6 o'clock, for the Lamas celebration. Uh, just a reminder, um, the Soul of Aging introduction, if you want to come and find out what is this thing, Soul of Aging, it, we're hoping that it can be in person if, if um, we can manage that here at the, in the church. That is Thursday night, August 18th. So sign up ahead so we know that you're planning on coming. Um, I want to just... Last week, we had a wonderful conversation about 
um, living with stress and anxiety that Sean um, uh, offered really wonderful presentation and discussion. And in the midst of that, one of our participants said, when I get overwhelmed, especially by the news, I take my damn it doll and I bang my damn it doll until I feel better. And our, what arrived in my mailbox yesterday was one template. So if anybody wants to help us create these, I, you know, I'm going to call them Beatitude dolls. So um, if somebody has the capacity to help us make them, to distribute them in the congregation, so we all have a reminder that we have resources when we're really over the top. Let me know. Rebecca. Hey, uh, thanks for letting me make a quick announcement. And I need one of those dolls. I really need one of those dolls. Um, I've certainly had trouble managing my emotions with some of the events of the summer. Um, but anyway, I just, um, there's not time to have this listed in the announcements that sent out this week. So I just wanted to mention it briefly in person. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, when am I performing in Winston? And I finally have an answer to that question. So this Wednesday, July 27, over on Watson Avenue, I'm having a backyard event with me and my music partner. So um, it's from seven to eight this Wednesday, July 27. It'll be a good uh, warm up. Come see me on Wednesday. Then we'll all go see Dan on uh, Sunday. Um, if you'd like the specific address or any more details, let me know, but this Wednesday at seven on Watson Avenue. Thanks, Rebecca. Just looking around if anybody's got their hand up or is wanting to speak. Let's um, participate as best you are able in our closing song. We are dancing Sarah's circle. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every 
around a, a generation every around a, a generation every round a generation siblings colleagues and all oh, on and oh no the circle is moving on and on the, the circle is moving on and on the circle is moving siblings partners and no all siblings partners and all life of faith is not some steady, linear rising in purity or righteousness towards some distant thing. It's widening, ever widening circles of connection, of deepening. Geyers of compassion so that we may know and receive and pour out love with and for each other in the name of God. Go on to just peace. Amen. I'm going to um, run and turn off our recording and our live streaming and I will be right back.